I would like to introduce our convocation speaker, who epitomizes some of the points I have made. Deepak Ahuja is the former chief financial officer of Tesla. He's currently a member of the board of directors FireEye Incorporated, a leading company in cybersecurity. He previously served as controller for the Small Cars Product Development Program at the Ford Motor Company and as the Chief Financial Officer for Ford of Southern Africa, where he oversaw the finance, legal, and information technology functions. He also served as the Chief Financial Officer for Auto Alliance International. He holds an MBA from Carnegie Mellon University and a master's in material science and engineering from Northwestern University and a bachelor in technology in ceramic engineering from Banaras Hindu University in India. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome Deepak Ahuja. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Dean, for that introduction. Um, the brilliance, talent, and knowledge of uh, people in this room is uh, both inspiring and humbling. It's uh, indeed an honor and my pleasure to be here today. Uh, congratulations again to the graduating students and especially to their parents, uh, better halves, families, and friends. Walking through this beautiful campus this morning, it felt full circle again, um, back to 31 years ago, when I first came to Northwestern. Fresh off the boat, so to say, as I was an international student from India. My parents uh, were born in present-day Pakistan, and um, they came as refugees uh, to uh, India during the turbulent partition that split the country apart about 70 years ago. They had a very humble beginning. Watching their determination and hard work to raise themselves to a middle-class life uh, deeply influenced my own approach to life. My formative experiences in the U.S. Um, occurred in the dark alleys of the tech building <laughs> in the presence of great professors and students. It was deja vu this morning, walking through those same old dark alleys today. And uh, some of the new alleys, uh, new corridors, uh, were almost equally dark. But for all of this, I am very grateful to Northwestern University for granting me admission in the first place um, and full scholarship. I wouldn't be standing here in front of you today otherwise. One of my early fond memories in Northwestern uh, is sitting in front of an IBM desktop computer for the first time in my life and in utter frustration. I just couldn't figure out how to turn the damn thing on. <laughs> I was in this predicament thanks to legendary professor Morris Fine, who had insisted that I submit my first home assignment typed. He simply refused to accept a handwritten version. Out of a feeling of total incompetence, I finally sought help from a friendly soul passing by. However, despite my repeated attempts, he just couldn't figure out what I wanted due to my very heavy Indian accent. When he finally understood what I wanted, he gave me a friendly smile, a pat on the back, and simply hit the little power button on the monitor. <laughs> we all face such vulnerable moments in life. I learned then that it is okay to ask for help. I can't express in words my sense of exhilaration upon completing my first typed assignment. And I can assure you it was not because of its contents. 
the high standards of excellence expected and maintained at Northwestern were huge training grounds for me. And they, they, they gave me long-term dividends in my life. Equally importantly, Northwestern taught me how to think rigorously, how to tackle complex problems systematically, and write well. I have no doubt that you've imbibed these very same qualities yourself at this great school. During my first job as an R&D engineer, I had a keen desire to be at the intersection of engineering, manufacturing, and uh, business, preferably international business. It became evident, though, that organizations tend to box people into certain roles. There's much inertia to move people out of those perceived boxes. Getting a master's degree in business therefore seemed like a good way for me to market myself differently. Fortunately, this has changed in recent times, whereby you don't need a business degree to switch to senior business uh, leadership positions. Engineers are now considered very valuable assets as CEOs and top executives in companies. Wall Street just didn't hold any attraction for me. Instead, I decided to join Ford in finance because the scope and opportunity there matched very well with what I needed. As my career progressed at Ford, I realized that my mentors and bosses often took a bet on me based on my perceived potential in doing a new job. They were willing to take a chance by envisioning my likelihood of success in a new set of challenges rather than having doubts due to my lack of relevant experience. I'm very grateful for that. Without such opportunities, I wouldn't have reached where I did. I've always kept that in mind when hiring and mentoring people. Potential and fit matters a lot more than prior relevant experience. It helps to have people who are brilliant, driven, and with the right attitude. This brings fresh thinking, enables rapid execution, and it creates possibilities to exceed expectations rather than just meet them. In retrospect, one of the pivotal experiences in my career was when I relocated to Johannesburg as CFO of Ford Southern Africa. It put me very much out of my comfort zone and again created that sense of vulnerability. In the process, it taught me many lessons in leadership and also gave me a taste for being an entrepreneur in a smaller organization. After about 15 years at Ford, a degree of restlessness began to creep in me. I had done reasonably well in my career. However, I would still wonder sometimes whether this is the most I could do with my life. Am I going to spend the rest of my life doing the same? Have I challenged myself enough and utilized my full potential? These nagging questions didn't have soothing answers. That's when the opportunity to join Tesla arose. Meeting Elon Musk and understanding his vision of Tesla was a game-changing moment in my life. The mission of Tesla, to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable transportation, struck a chord in me. We all know about climate change. There's strong scientific evidence that CO2 emissions cause a greenhouse effect, thus unnaturally heating our Earth. As engineers, we are problem solvers. I wanted to be part of the broader mission of tackling a growing global problem. I felt passion about this new opportunity in a way that I hadn't felt before. It was clear to me, though, that Tesla had many daunting challenges on all fronts. Odds of success were clearly 50% or less. Deciding to join Tesla felt like a fork in the road of my life. Should I take this risk? Or should I stay on the secure and comfortable path? I took the leap of faith to join Tesla and moved from Michigan to California with my wife and two teenage daughters. In retrospect, I was naive then about what it really meant to join a startup. Thank God for that. 
Otherwise, I may not have taken such a bold step. Working at Tesla taught me that having determination and grit to succeed, along with passion for the job, are better predictors of success than just being brilliant. Of course, if you have all of these qualities, like Elon Musk, then your odds of success become extraordinarily high. But for us mere mortals who don't possess all the skills, it is important to know what is key to success. In the early days at Tesla, the thought often crossed my mind that failure was simply not an option. We humans can become very creative when faced with difficult challenges. In such situations, you discover far more potential in yourself than you ever thought you possessed. Of course, success is never guaranteed despite our best efforts because many external forces outside of our control are inputs in this complex equation. It is equally important to accept failure gracefully and to fight on in the next battle. I deeply believe that whatever happens in life happens for the best. We are often unable to recognize this with the limited tool of our mind. As our careers progress, success is also dependent, or less dependent rather, on our individual contributions. What I achieved was ultimately determined by the motivated performance of many people on my team. Being humble in recognizing this valuable lesson is key to good leadership. As you go through your careers, keep building a network of good people who are peers and mentees for you. They will be essential to your long-term growth. Based on my life experiences, I'd encourage you to keep pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. That is the best way to discover your hidden potential, and there is a lot of it. Many seemingly insurmountable challenges will come your way on this path. You may not always succeed, but it will be your determination and the ability to have great people around you that will heavily influence your success. As master's graduates from McCormick, you have an amazing foundation, which gives you a jump start to be thought leaders, innovators, and entrepreneurs at the cutting edge of technology. I have met many Northwestern alumni with your pedigree who have proven this over and over again. So precedence is in your favor. It is your time now to go shine. I wish you all the best in achieving professional success and personal happiness in your lives. Thank you.